OK, so today we're going to look at OCR document capture. So this is where we can take a PDF invoice attached to an email and bring it into Business Central without the need of any additional work. The process I'm going to show you today, we're going to cover four different documents. So we're going to show a part receipt of a purchase order against a purchase invoice. Uh, the receipt of an invoice for a supplier that we that we know and an invoice for a, a supplier that we don't know. So just an invoice that we've received and also the receipt of the balance of that purchase order. I am going to elongate this process so that you can see what's happening. I am handling this manually uh, all the way through the process. There are ways to completely automate this so that it is not so laborious. Otherwise, there would be little point. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, find our invoices in our email. So here I've got the four invoices that I'm going to talk through. So part matching the PO, the balance of our purchase order, a random invoice and from our cleaning company. So we would set up a rule here, but in fact, I'm going to forward these emails to a special account. So this purchase account is where we will receive all of the purchase invoices coming into the system. Now, obviously, you would set up a rule. Anything with an attachment will go in to the system. So I'm going into um, Business Central. Here we'll find these four invoices coming into this document and then they uh, for OCR and then they go into the invoices for approval. Now it is a little bit a case of uh, blink and you miss it. So I'm just going to keep refreshing the screen. So there they are in the documents for OCR and then we want to see them come into the documents for scanning. So there they are, they've moved into the documents for import. Uh, if I go and look at these four uh, documents, then basically um, I can look at the actual file. So if I click the show file button, it downloads the attachment for me and I can see that this is uh, for our office clean and basically it's uh, just it's a copy of the invoice. So I could import these one at a time here, so there is a function to import the file, but obviously that's a bit laborious. So I'm going to, and again, this could be automated. So here I'm going to go actions, functions, import files, and basically that's moving them all into documents to register. If any of those documents had an issue on the import, then they would obviously arrive in the documents for uh, uh, documents with error. So there we've got our four documents there ready in our um, documents to register here. So when I go into this function here, I can now see these four invoices. So we've got our um, our purchase order receipt. On this one, we've got we've got the balance of the purchase order. On this one, we've got the uh, random invoice and this one is our cleaning invoice. So I can see a copy of the document alongside it from there. Um, you'll also notice that this one doesn't have a template. When we're dealing with invoices that are coming from regular suppliers, we will already have mapped the details. So this one has a template against it and the template is identifying the fields that we want to match. So you'll see in red uh, around here the that the um, the fields that we're mapping are in red and then the answers are in blue. So here we've mapped the invoice date and the invoice number and then down here we've got the goods, the VAT and the invoice total. So this is on a, a straightforward one. If we look at Coolwood Technologies, we have the purchase order number here being mapped. And then we have the column headings because we know what we're expecting underneath from that point of view. So depending on the supplier, uh, depending uh, de therefore depends on what we've uh, what we're mapping on the template. Once the template is set up, it's done. You don't have to use it again. And you can see it's using the same template here between the two invoices from Coolwood Technology against our purchase order. Service Electronics is a company that we uh, have either never dealt with before or we only deal with very occasionally, and we haven't mapped uh, those fields. So I'll take you through that process. So if we start with the bottom one, because it's it's very straightforward and very simple. So here we've got our invoice from JPF. 
it's an invoice for our office clean so there's no purchase order as we can see we've mapped the invoice date and time at uh, the date and number and then we're picking up the, the the totals and we can see those fields mapped over here yeah so it's we've also mapped where this line is going to so 8110 is my gl code for cleaning <clears throat> so part of the mapping exercise is what do we do with these lines? Which accounts are we taking them to? So from this point of view, I'm happy with all of that. All I need to do is register this invoice. So that will disappear from my list, takes me to the document. So I'm now in the purchase invoice screen. It's attached the scan copy of the invoice. So that's already attached for me. And here's my invoice header with all the details. And here's my line for cleaning. And we've got our invoice for £400, uh, our goods and our VAT, bringing us down to the same invoice total. So obviously from here, if I've got approvals on, I would send the approvals or alternatively, I go and post the document. Yeah, we all know how to do that, so I'm not going to uh, bother in this case. So it's disappeared from my list here. So the first one I'm going to tackle here <coughs> is our purchase order where we've received in a number of lines so here we've got obviously the invoice number and the invoice date matched but it's also picked up our purchase order 106050 so that's our purchase order number um, and it's pulling through three lines of that purchase order what i now want to do is here is go and match the lines and it will take us and show us what it's actually doing so you can see here i've got another 100 athens desks to be brought in um, and it's not matched any of those so it's just matching these three bold and lines here so there are other elements on this purchase order and it's using the functions here of get receipt lines so in standard business central we can have purchase orders purchase orders purchase orders but obviously the suppliers could deliver multiple uh, deliveries or one delivery from multiple purchase order lines so there is a way that you can handle that in business central you create an invoice header and then there is a function on the lines to go and get receipt lines and that's what it's showing us here it's showing us all of the receipt lines available for this supplier and in this case it's matched the three based on the details in the document here so my loudspeakers and my delivery so loudspeakers and delivery to site so once I'm happy with this, I can um, just process this document so I can choose process register and that document again will arrive inside Business Central for me and it's used the same functionality of get receipt lines. Here's the receipt number. Here's the receipt number for the delivery. So it's picked up all of the elements and there's my invoice total correct. So 361, uh, sorry, 301 and then 36120 with the VAT. So again, I can just hit the post button and that goes through. So that leaves me with these two uh, documents to tackle here. The uh, this one is the same as the um, as the last one we've seen, but it's bringing in the remainder of that purchase order number 10605. Um, and if I again go to uh, functions match lines we'll go to the document card for invoice matching and you can see that it's already matched these other and now it's matching this this top line here on the functions get receipt lines so from that point of view i can just register this one and process that document through in the normal way so it's only brought through the one line on a different invoice number 1040 1045 and obviously my totals are very expensive Athens desks, so 60,792, including that. Very expensive Athens desks. So the last one I've got to deal with here is for um, a one off invoice, in this case from Service Electronics. Now, there is no template here. So this is the first time that we've received this invoice from this supplier. And so therefore the system doesn't know doesn't recognize where those fields are. So we've got an invoice date and invoice number at the top here. And then obviously we've got lines and totals further down our invoice. So there is a facility under here to recognize the fields and that will take us into this screen here and it's done what it can. So it's recognized the invoice in exactly the same way as it's done before and it's found the totals. So that's 
that's brilliant. All we've got to do now, and it's giving us a warning down here about this, all we've got to do now is to specify the GL account number. So this document wouldn't register now until we've actually given it that GL number. And if I scroll down here, then obviously when I drill in here, it's drilling into my entire chart of accounts. So I'm going to search for repairs because this is a service one and I'm going to pick 8130, which is our income statement ready for our repairs. And therefore, it's going to take this in the future for the account that we use here. So now we've mapped the fields. We know which GL code we're posting to. All I have to do is to register this document and it will take it through into Business Central for me. So it's taking it through to 8130. Uh, it's looking at our £150 to service our air conditioning. Um, and then obviously, as I said before, I just approve it or post it, whichever my process is. So that's handled all of our, our documents here. So as I say, this is I've taken you through this process very manually, but in reality, you can automate majority of those processes so that those documents arrive and then the human being just sanity checks them and sends them on for processing. Hopefully you found that useful. We've got a number of customers using this and finding it a huge benefit and obviously a huge cost saving because you haven't got man somebody manually keying in all of those invoices. So if you need any more information or some costings, this will work with Dynamics NAV or with Business Central. Again, it will work on premise or in the cloud. If you need any information, then by all means, uh, email me catherine.ross at d-c.co.uk and I can get a demo or some quotes done for you. Thank you very much. Hopefully you found that useful.